So there it is. As you can see, like the entire skin is just peeled back. The fun part is going to be getting musked on and bit probably, so. Hey, what's up you guys? My name is Tyler Ruggie. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today's video is definitely a different one. I'm just gonna get straight into it, but just some disclaimers are ahead before anyone comments below, just to make everything clear. But basically, Maddie and I were out, you know, by the river, looking for some wood for reptile enclosures, as reptile people do. If you're stumbling across this video, this is all just going to be very confusing for you. I have a lot of reptile enclosures because I don't have a life. So I was looking for wood by the river, as was Maddie, and basically we like climbed down this little like ledge, and then as we were climbing up, I noticed a snake shed. And I was like, oh cool, like there's a snake here, sick. Just out of the corner of my eye, I see movement and I see a snake slithering and I was like, oh cool. So naturally I wanna like take a closer look because I'm not a normal human being. And my instinct when I see a snake isn't to like run away, it's to move closer to it. So I did and I noticed that it was pretty severely injured. I was like, hey, Maddie, should we take it? And she was like, I guess. I I'm, I'm just carrying this snake. Like, we're also like in a very public place where there's people everywhere and they're like, why, are what are you doing? I'm gonna get into the story once the actual vlog footage begins, but I wanna put a disclaimer in here that my goal here is in no way to encourage anyone if you find injured wildlife to try to take it in and take care of it yourself. Almost nine times out of 10, that's not a good idea. Most people don't really know what to do. And I feel like people often find things like reptiles or even more often things like squirrels or raccoons or rabbits that are injured. And people want to do good and want to help it and want to take it in and try to take care of it. But there's a lot that goes into wildlife rehabilitation that just regular people don't know about, and oftentimes you're gonna do more harm than good. Not to mention, depending on where you live and local laws, but in a lot of places, taking in local wildlife like that is illegal. So it's just not good to do. Usually when you find injured wildlife, the first thing you wanna do is go on your like state's wildlife page, and you wanna try to find a wildlife rehabilitator who is trained specifically for whatever animal you found and you want to give them a call and see if they can come pick up the animal and do it because they are trained, they've taken classes and they know what they're doing and it's also legal for them to do so. And that's just the most responsible thing you can do even if you want to take matters into your own hands. It's just better to leave it to someone who knows what they're doing. Now you might be like, Tyler, you're a huge hypocrite. And I was very hesitant about it at first, don't get me wrong. But I, I was comfortable with it because first of all, we looked into it and the species we found is legal to take from the wild and keep in captivity. So it's legal. The very first thing we did was try to find a wildlife rehabilitator, but we couldn't find any wildlife rehabilitators in our area that takes snakes. We also tried to contact our exotic vet to see if they would see the snake and they said that they do not see wildlife. So we did take all these other steps that would have been more ideal deal, but we kind of came short. But we were also comfortable with doing it because obviously Maddie and I both have years of experience taking care of snakes, and Maddie was actually a wildlife rehabilitator in the state of Ohio before she moved here, and so she has years of experience working under rehabilitators and being a rehabilitator herself, and she rehabbed reptiles, and so she already kind of had background knowledge on what to do. And the specific injury, although it does look pretty severe, if we just keep it clean and we take care of it, it is going to heal pretty much on its own. So it's not like there's a ton that goes into this specific case that we found. And we also do have a lot of resources and we reached out to people who are really knowledgeable about wildlife that we know personally, who also gave us a lot of tips on what to do and how to handle the situation. Long story short, I just don't want anyone to find wildlife and then want their first instinct to be to try to take care of it themselves. Had I found a rabbit, a squirrel, 
anything that wasn't a snake, basically, I would not be comfortable with doing any of this. So if you do find injured wildlife, please, first of all, make sure it's legal to take it. Do try to find a rehabber who will take it in and take matters into their hands. I just wanna put that disclaimer out there so I'm not putting the wrong message out here. But enough of that. I know you guys just want to see the snake and see what we did. So let's go roll the footage. Hey guys, so this isn't a video that I thought I would be filming today. But Maddie and I were down by the river collecting wood for enclosures and whatnot. And I came across a snake shed and... I was like, oh cool, there's like a snake around here. And we've seen a snake in this spot before, so I don't know if it's possibly the same snake, but I just like looked around because I was like, oh, I wonder if the snake's around here. I noticed this guy slithering around, but I noticed he has an injury, which I'm gonna show you the injury in a second. Just disclaimer, it's kind of graphic. I noticed his skin is like completely just peeled back and the underneath his flesh is showing. The injury is just really nasty and it was just sad and I didn't want to leave him there. So I decided I would try to help him. Hopefully I can. We also might see if there's like a rehabber that, you know, specializes in reptiles that might know what to do. Yeah, in the meantime, we set up just an empty exoterra we have in our garage because obviously we're going to keep this away from our reptiles inside and we're going to have to be careful to like wash our hands really good and everything because obviously we don't know if he is carrying anything. I'm going to show you guys his wound so just if you're woozy around that type of thing do not proceed. Um, so there it is as you can see like the entire skin is just peeled back in two spots right there. I have no idea like what happened what caused this. It's just a really strange injury to have I feel like. It doesn't seem like the flesh underneath is like injured, it's just the skin's peeled back. We're gonna try to contact some people, but he's a northern water snake, which would make sense because we found him literally right by the river. I literally looked so stupid because I was, we were at like a cider mill and I was just walking down the trail carrying the snake and everyone was staring at me and they were like, is that guy holding a snake? And a couple people stopped me and were like, are, like, are you holding a snake? And I'm like, yes, yes I am. Like what, like just imagine seeing this, like walking by, like, I don't know. I would want to be their friend. And I also didn't have a container to put it in. So I literally just had to hold it in the car ride home. Luckily it's not that far away from us. But anyways, just a disclaimer too, obviously don't just go picking up random snakes if you don't know what it is. I wasn't super worried. I kind of knew it was a water snake and I also don't really have any dangerous snakes that live around me. So that wasn't a huge concern for me, but just in general, if you're not familiar with your native wildlife, just saying like, don't pick up random snakes because obviously there's some dangerous ones that you don't want to touch in a lot of places. So we just rinsed him off to get all the dirt out of his wounds and everything. So, Ew, it literally looks like chicken. Ew. Very temporary. Not something I would normally keep a snake in, just disclaimer. But we just threw a hide and some water in there and just paper towels in there. So we're just gonna keep him in there for now and hopefully we can find someone who'll be able to help him. Um, but yeah, we're gonna start calling people and then I will keep you updated. Hopefully this is something that can be treated. I just feel so bad for him. And he's about to shed too. You can see his like eye caps are white and he looks really dull. So he looks like he's actually gonna shed soon. All right, so it's the next day and we are basically going to go ahead and try to start treating the wounds. Luckily, it does look like when we found the snake, the wounds were pretty fresh. Like it doesn't really seem like there's any signs of infection or anything so far. I'm gonna take him out of here and we're gonna put him in a betadine bath and we're gonna let him soak in there and just let the betadine like get all over the wounds and then we're gonna put polysporin on that and then we're gonna put him back in here and then we're gonna have to do that like every day so it's gonna be a process but hopefully we're able to help him out the fun part is going to be getting musked on and bit probably so Oh good, he's being nice to me. 
Oh. <laughs> Just missed the musk. Oh, it's dripping. Okay, ew. Yuck. All right. It looks a lot darker on the camera than it is in real life. I'm sorry if that hurts. I'm so sorry. Okay. So yeah, we're just gonna let them soak in there for a little bit. I'm sorry. I promise you this is better than slowly dying from infection. You smell disgusting. Thank you. There's the musk. Love that. But luckily most of it missed me. So it's been about 15 minutes, so we're gonna go ahead and take them out, rinse them off, and then get the other solution on him. Hello. I do not want to be musked on. It's okay, Snacky. I know. I need to see the wound. It kind of looks better today. Yeah. Excuse me, Snava. I don't know. It's so pretty. It's such a pretty snake. Do I say hi to the camera? Very beautiful. It's like, please no, please no, please no, please no, please no, please no. Please, no. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, I'll lock it. Ow. So that leads us to where we are now. And the only issue that we have run into that we've thought of is we might be keeping the snake a little bit longer than we actually wanted to because in about a month, it's gonna start cooling down really, really cold. And basically if the ground freezes before the snake is releasable, we're gonna have to keep the snake through the winter until it's not frozen outside anymore. Otherwise the snake would obviously probably just end up dying if we let it out and it was like frozen on the ground. We're thinking, depending on how quick the wounds heal, which is not looking like they're gonna heal that quickly, we might have to keep it through the winter, but we will be releasing the snake as soon as it's warm enough outside and as long as it's all healthy and good to go. We have no plans on keeping this snake because obviously it's just the right thing to do. We found it, it was injured, we wanna help it, and then we wanna release it back where we found it. I will be keeping you guys up to date on what happens with the snake and just its overall health and how it improves. And I did set up a more permanent enclosure for it, at least for the time being where we're gonna have it. So it does have more space now. We're keeping it in a 40 gallon exoterra. I gave it heat and I gave it UVB and all that good stuff. Here she is in good hands. We are obviously also keeping it quarantined away from our other pets. So yeah, that's about it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel if you're new here and you want updates on this new little snake buddy we have. Leave name suggestions down below. Check out my social media links. Those will be down in the description below. And I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.